Hello everybody, welcome back to Brothers in Air. As usual, I've got the Flash Pup here. And today in this video, I'm gonna talk all about all things Quiet Energy Shroud related. So, the first thing that everybody seems to wanna to know is, how do you take it off? So the first thing that you wanna do is take the end cap off of the shroud. It's just a threaded end cap. And you just thread it out like that. There is an O-ring on this little seat past the threads, and that seals the end cap into the taper of, of the shroud there on the end so that when you take your shot, air is not able to come through and escape through the threads, you know, and out, out that way. So there should be an O-ring on here. And now, if your baffles are in the correct way, facing the, the correct way, you should be able to take your, your, your pinky and stick it in here like this and get a hold of that first one. You can just kind of jam it in and get a hold of it. And these are just like the other uh, baffles in, in the other guns, you know. It's just a, a, a plastic baffle with some reinforced felt wrapped around it. But... The other ones, unless you want to tip your gun upside down and get to shaking it like crazy, the other ones in here, you're going to need something to reach in there and grab them with. So I'm going to use this uh, pick hook set. I got these, I don't remember how many are in the set, you know, it's all different shapes and sizes, but I got these at Harbor Freight. Uh, I think it was five to six bucks or something for the set. And these things are great. They work great for uh, removing and installing O-rings you know, reaching in little places and, and, and grabbing hold of springs or different things. And, uh, you know, in this situation, I'm going to use it to pull the baffles out of the shroud. So these things are great when it comes to working on your air guns. So now I'm just going to go in there and grab hold of that next baffle. And like I said, these are just like, uh, you know, the other ones that, that guns that have this similar shroud like this, you know, and, if you look at it, there's a big hole on one end, and then there's a very small hole on the other end. The correct way for these baffles to be in the, in the shroud are with the large hole facing forward and the small hole facing the breech of the gun. So that is, in fact, the correct way that they go into the gun. And now, just like others, we've got two more solid style baffles in here. Let's see if I can get a hold of both of them at once. No, just one. Same thing, you know, just like the AT44 and others, it's just plastic, you know. I'm gonna set that down. Now I'm gonna go in here and grab my other one. There's the last one. And now, all the baffles are out of the shroud. There's a barrel nut inside the shroud here. It fits in tight against here, right where the taper begins. And that's where it seats itself. So, in order to get that loose, what you're gonna need is a 14 millimeter socket. Now, if you use a deep well and a six inch extension, that'll get you right to it. You know, otherwise, whatever combination, uh, you know, or, or driver that you use or whatever, that's fine. So now I'm going to feed the socket into the shroud until I feel it against the nut. And I'm just going to make sure that, I, that I've got uh, the socket seated around the hex of the nut. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the breech right here, the block of it. You know, you could hold it right here or whatever, but it, it, I'm just going to hold it here. And all you're going to do, just like when you're loosening anything, spin it counterclockwise 
and get it going. Now you can see the shroud started spinning when I got it loose. All I do is break it loose and then you can take it off the rest of the way uh, by hand. Um, like I said, the way that it, that it seats and tensions is against this taper. So once you've got it broken loose, as long as the O-ring is in there uh, seated around the, the barrel nut like it should be, um, you should just with a little bit of outward pressure this way, and I'm not talking pulling, you know, but just keeping outward pressure on it that way so that that barrel nut stays snug against the taper. And then when you're, when you're unscrewing it, the nut's actually spinning. Uh, and especially if there's no O-ring on the nut, then it's really just going to spin and you're going to have to use uh, your socket to get it all the way to the end of the threads. Um, but like I said, just a little bit of forward pressure and a spin, and you should see it coming away from the breech here. That's how you'll know. And now it just broke loose and it's unthreaded. Now, when you take this off, uh, you don't want to pull it out like you're unsheathing a sword or something, you know. What I like to do is, is lift up on it and keep, a, keep an upwards pressure all the way. And then when I'm sliding it off, I know that the inside of the shroud is riding the bottom side of the barrel rather than the shroud scraping all the way along the air tank there because all you're going to do is, is mar this up and scratch it up, scratch your air tank. So that's why I keep it up like that and gently pull it off uh, with that constant upward pressure on it. So now that I've got the shroud off of the gun, I'm going to point out the fact that some people have had their gun arrive without an o-ring on this barrel nut so if, if that thing falls right out of there or like i said if you were unable to unscrew it by hand once you broke it loose with that that outward pressure um then that o-ring's not on there you know if it just falls right out it shouldn't and there's a very good reason for that o-ring and I'll, I'll get to that but so now what you're going to do is you're going to take a wooden dowel or you know something of the sort stick it into the shroud and feed it all the way in until you hit up against it and then I just use my hand cupped like this and I push it out and you're just going to push and feed it out until it pops into your hand and then pull your doll back out so now I'm going to take the shroud and set it here now like I said there is supposed to be an o-ring on here i've seen it in comments guys questioning whether or not there should be one on there and i've also seen in a lot of comments in different places um guys saying that when they removed their shroud and took this barrel nut out of the shroud for the first time um they destroyed the o-ring uh, you know i've seen guys even say i took apart my shroud and i destroyed some kind of o-ring i don't even know where it goes um so I can attest to the fact that this is not the only flash pup uh, or flash that I have removed the shroud from. And on all three of them, when I pushed this barrel nut out the shroud and it drug past them threads, it just sh it just shredded the uh, O-ring to pieces. And, and I don't mean cut it up, you know, and uh, screwed it up. I'm talking to pieces. Like, it, it chopped it up pulled it all the way up and out of the groove and the barrel nut came out with just a little piece in here and the rest of them were in the shroud and, and falling to the floor and stuff. And so what I did is I thought I wanted to use one that was a, a tighter fit and I wanted it to fit really snug in there. Um, I, I'm not for sure the material that they're using, you know, with the stock install, uh, you know, but you could use Viton or Bina N or whatever, you know, I, I wouldn't use a, a, a silicone O-ring, but you, you can use whatever. But anyways, so what I did is I put a U.S. standard size A114. Let me double check. Yeah, that's the one I use. So anyways, uh, U.S. standard A114 is the size that I use uh, to install onto here. And it, it, uh, it, it seats in there a lot firmer. It's a very tight fit. And um, it seems to even seat 
on its outer diameter, on its outside diameter, it seems to seat firmer in the shroud. So that's what I did. And I just, you know, this is a, not a critical application here. So you really, like I said, Vuitton, Buna N, uh, this is a set from Harbor Freight. And I don't use these, these uh, O-rings in any of my guns uh, besides application like this. You know, something that I, I don't care if it... Good God, man. <laughs> I got a fly buzzing around in here. It was a couple of months ago I was doing a video, uh, you know, dead of winter. It's still cold out now. We still got snow on the ground. And, and I don't know where does this fly come from, you know? Where's it been all this time? I, I have no idea. But excuse me for the fly that's probably going to buzz around me and, and pass the lens of the camera. So anyways... A114, and uh, like I said, it, it fits tighter in the shroud, and it seats tighter into this groove. And also one thing that I found is once I installed this O-ring and put the shroud back together, once I got it lined up, and I'll show you that when I put it back together, I only needed that 14 millimeter uh, socket just to snug it up to where I wanted it. And from that point on, I can take the, I've taken the shroud off 20 times uh, and, the, and the nut doesn't slip in, in there or spin. Um, the shroud comes up right where it should, you know, with the QE on the side uh, and that milled flat on the bottom of the shroud lined up just right where it should be. So I think also that that may be a benefit of installing this O-ring in there versus versus the one that was in there. Anyway, and also I've, I've pushed this out through the threads uh, probably 10 to 15 times, I suppose. And I've never, you know, there's really not even much uh, of a mark on it. You know, it definitely isn't isn't uh, being damaged to the point where it's it's going to come out in pieces. So, oh, and here's another thing: if you do not have this O-ring uh, around the the barrel nut like this, uh, you may not notice it if you don't have a regulator installed, because the regulator, you know, it depings the the air reservoir when you take your shot. Um, but once that air reservoir is depinged, if you didn't have this O-ring on here, uh, there's an incredibly audible shroud ping that happens um, when you take your shot. So you definitely want this this on there, you know. And like I said, if you don't have one or if you destroy it, you know, the stock one when removing the barrel nut, uh, with, you know, and you should be able to take that barrel nut out of there in and out if you want. Uh, you know, you get a lead dust collection inside the shroud. Uh, it 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 builds up, you know, and things. And and I clean my my shroud regularly. You know, I run a run a rag through it or whatever. Take all the pieces out and uh, wipe them down. And uh, you know, blow this barrel nut out real good with my air compressor. And um, I like to keep it clean in there. So. What you're going to do, if you remove it and, and your, your O-ring is not destroyed and it's intact and, and you don't want to switch it out to, uh, you know, the A114, then, or regardless, even if you do switch it out, what you want to do is take some silicone grease and just get a dab of it. And you want to put a little silicone grease just around the outside diameter of the nut where, uh, on the O-ring, you know. And that's just going to help protect the O-ring as it's passing uh, through them threads, you know, and it, it's going to ease installation and removal. Um, and one thing you'll find is that a lot of manufacturers, uh, you know, when they're assembling the guns, they don't want to get grease. Uh, they don't want to get silicone oil on things. So in my experience, I've found that when disassembling a lot of air guns from the factory, a lot of the O-rings, including, uh, you know, that seal the air reservoir and whatnot, they're completely dry. They, they don't even have uh, a shred of, of any lubrication, uh, you know, any silicone grease or oil or anything. So, you know, it makes sense that, that they don't want to uh, get the gun, you know, all gunked up with oils and grease and, and have to take an extra step to uh, clean it off and things like that. Um, but having that on there, you know, some, some, you know, treating your O-rings with some silicone oil or some silicone grease 
it, it just uh, helps with insulation and it also prolongs the life of them. It, it, it gives them a little bit of extra help seeding uh, against that high pressure air. So anyways, before I get too much into O-rings, because I do want to make a video specifically about uh, O-rings and uh, I'm going to debunk a couple myths and uh, I'm going to tell you where I get mine from, what I use and why and all that good stuff. So, but anyways, back to this, I'm going to set this nut to the side right now because I want to talk about something else just for a second. Somebody had said to me that they wondered if uh, the gun would be more accurate with an air stripper on it versus, versus the shroud. Um, so, of course, the flash puff is sold in an unshrouded version. Um, and and, and I've, I've seen the unshrouded version with uh, an air stripper attachment on the end of it. Now, here's, here's what I want to talk about is the fact that personally, although I haven't tried it, I don't think that the shrouded version of the flash pup would be less accurate than the unshrouded version with an air stripper attachment on the end. And I'll tell you why. And also too, if you were to get an air stripper uh, to, to, to fit on, you know, this is threaded, it'll fit the, the, the hots on air strippers uh, and some others too. But if you were to put that on there and you had the shrouded version, you would, you would probably need to either order the, the barrel band for the unshrouded version or make or create some kind of a, a, a bushing or spacer to go in there around it um, so that the barrel, you know, so that the, the barrel is still secure and your barrel harmonics aren't going all over the place, you know. Um, so that's just a thought. But anyhow, I forgot to mention also, you also have this little uh, collar that the shroud fits over and, and then this collar is what goes up against the breech. And uh, I just forgot to mention it. So anyways, it may even stay in the shroud and, and come all the way off when, when, you know, when, you, when you remove it. So just keep that in mind that, that this collar is there. And if you don't see it on the barrel, um, it's still stuck in the end of the shroud. So back to uh, the air stripper stuff. In essence, what's happening, the quiet energy system is in fact quieting the shot. But it, it's a twofold system, and I, th I think it, from a, an expense perspective, I think it's a, it's a great system. And that's just my opinion, uh, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. These are just, like I said, my thoughts and my opinions. So I think it's a great system, and I, and I think uh, it's a great setup. You know, it's a great way to do it inexpensively, but have it work very well. So what happens you've got these two uh, solid plastic baffles in there first. So what happens, why do we use an air stripper uh, in the first place on any air gun? That's because when you take your shot, the air is moving faster than the pellet that's seated in the breech. The air is pushing the pellet and the pellet is accelerating. So as soon as the pellet leaves the barrel, the air is still behind it moving faster than the, than the pellet itself. So what can happen is that that blast of air behind the pellet can, can influence its flight. You know, you've got all this turbulence and this air blast behind it, and that can influence early flight of the pellet and until that air slows down. You know, it would be immediately right out, right out the tip of the barrel, but that pellet would keep going, the air would, would slow down and disperse, you know, right away. But in that, in that split second or in that second or whatever it would be, uh, that blast of air behind it may influence the pellet's flight early on like that, you know, right out of the tip of the barrel. So that's the whole point of an air stripper in the first place. But like I said, the quiet energy system, it, it's a twofold setup because what's happening as the pellet exits the barrel, it's meeting no resistance whatsoever as it travels through the whole shroud. Okay. What's happening with the air is that immediately after it exits the barrel, or it even is still exiting the barrel, rather than like the pellet being able to freely move forward, it's high pressure air. So it wants to expand in any direction that it can. So what happens is it expands into this cavity 
and some of it gets blown back immediately, you know, through the through the holes in the barrel nut and starts coming out the exhaust valve. This is all milliseconds here I'm talking. So um, so some of that air can sneak through this hole, right? Some of it's going to move forward. It's high pressure air. It's under pressure. It's going to push air through this. But the pellet met no resistance. A whole bunch of the air met resistance when it spread out into this little cavity and a bunch of it hit this face. And like I said, this, you know, I'm talking about it in really slow descriptive terms, but we're, we're talking milliseconds here. So a bunch of air went into the first baffle, spread out, got slowed down. The pellet was able to keep moving freely. And then the air moved, you know, what air wasn't, uh, whatever air pressure keeps on going, got up into the next plastic baffle, met a bunch of resistance, spread out. It was able to take a path backwards through the shroud and over the barrel and out the exhaust port. And so then, you know, it's, it's stripping away the air in stages a little bit, a little bit. And now we move on to the plastic uh, baffle with with the felt around it now like i said and that's the reason why these baffles should be installed with the little hole uh facing the breech because now what's going to happen after that air went into the first baffle and a bunch of it got slowed down and diverted backwards more of it went into the second baffle and it got slowed down and diverted backwards but now look what happens now we've got a hole in this baffle that is only allowing 30 thousandths of an inch of clearance around the pellet. Now, if you don't have something to measure with or, or like a, a, a tape or a ruler that measures 30 seconds, uh, think about this. The international standard size for money cards, credit cards, debit cards, you know, all that crap, all the cards that we scan and can use all around the world, uh, the standard size for that is 30 thousandths of an inch. So take your bank card and hold it up and look at it sideways. That's how much space is, is around that pellet. 30 to 32 thousandths of an inch. So when, it's, when that pellet's passing through this tiny, tiny hole with only 30 thousandths of an inch around the outside edge of it and not meeting any resistance, uh, but that air is basically slamming into a brick wall. So... Within a split second, the pellet has already outpaced the air. We've, we're slowing down the air immediately and we're dispersing it. It's going backwards. It's spreading out, losing pressure. It's being done in stages, but the pellet is allowed to freely travel through the shroud without any resistance whatsoever. And so that's how the shroud works. And, and that's why it's, it's, it does an excellent job of stripping that initial burst of air from the pellet and if it wasn't doing an excellent job of that they probably wouldn't get away with this this small hole with only uh you know 30 32 thousandths of an inch of clearance around the pellet because if there was and also without a very uh, very square nice crown on the barrel um that's another way you can know that they are crowning these barrels in a nice way because if they weren't there's no way that that pellet's flight. And if this thing wasn't stripping air, there's a very good chance that it would clip the baffle. It, 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 and that's just my opinion, but I, I think it would. 30 thousandths of an inch is not a lot. And like I said, I think it's a great system. So all that uh, air went through the baffle, stripped away, slammed into a brick wall, spread out, exhausted through the felt. It's going backwards. Then it's got another baffle you know, air, what, what air pressure's left goes into there, spreads out, some, you know, this is all millisecond, you know, that's, it's not happening, you know, slow, it's all like that. Uh, but essentially that's what it's doing. It's stripping the air from the pellet, diverting a whole bunch of it backwards, and it's also quieting the shot too, because we have all this diffusion of the air. So that's how it works, and those are just my thoughts and my opinions on the uh, baffles in the shroud. So now, what I'm gonna do, well, I guess I'm gonna do this. On to this modification. If you have uh, received your flash pup, or even other guns, 
and they have uh, this type of shroud system, this, this type of uh, baffle system where air is exhausted backwards. It travels through the barrel nut, over and around the barrel between that space, you know, that, that, that gap between the, the barrel and the shroud, and then it comes out the exhaust hole. Oh, and that's another thing. I've seen a couple guys, uh, you know, obviously their first time getting into PCPs or whatever, they said on a forum or something, or on a comments or something, they said, uh, hey, you know, I, I like the gun and it's it's performing okay, it seems, but, I, you know, I got a bad barrel. There's a hole in my barrel, uh, kind of on the bottom side or whatever, you know. So this hole, that's what that is. When that air is stripped away and a whole bunch of it's diverted backwards through the barrel nut and, and around the, the barrel through that gap, it's exhausted through that hole. And that's why if you, if you didn't know that, if you just hold your finger there and take a shot, you'll feel that blast of air. All that air that's stripped and diverted to the rear, you'll feel it out that exhaust port hole. So that's why that hole's in the shroud. And now, like I was saying uh, about this modification, uh, shrouds like this and systems like this, if you if it's your first time, you know, you just got the flash pup and say you ran through uh, a, a 10 or two of pellets and you're so proud of your gun, you're always wiping it down, you want to keep it clean and you notice this huge chrome lead colored uh, shiny spot here, you know, all over the air reservoir and on down the side, maybe even a little bit of it starting to deposit on the wood and, and along here. Uh, what that is, is that's lead dust. And like I said, uh, all that dust from, whoops, from all that air that's diverted backwards, you're going to get lead dust accumulating um, in these baffles. You're going to get lead, you know, look at, look at here. If you've got a newer one and you look at these, uh, you can see that they're no longer white. There's a lot of gray in there. So that's about 4,000 some shots later and, and lead dust has been trapped into the fibers of the felt. So I like to, you know, like I said, take it all out, wipe it all down, get the lead dust out of there. And I like to keep it clean in there. But I've taken a further step because that lead dust, you know, it's almost like a graphite. It's so, so fine. It, it, it'll get into the pores of your skin. It'll get into the pores of the metal uh, and, and the grain of the metal, so to speak, you know, tooling and stuff like that. Uh, even when you, when you grind a surface, uh, and, and it's, it's a very fine grind, you still have microscopic pores. And now you're talking about, uh, almost, you know, a very, very fine dust. It's not easy to clean off. Uh, it smears and it spreads. Um, and obviously you don't want to use some kind of a, a solvent or a harsher chemical and, and try to get it off quicker that way. And, and uh, damage the finish on the stock or something like that. So this modification is going to take care of that and it's going to further diffuse the air that's traveling back through that barrel nut and around the shroud and out the exhaust hole. And it's also gonna filter that exhaust hole so that you never ever again have any dust accumulation or even dust uh, exhausting from that hole, that lead dust. And, and whether or not, it, you know, it could affect your health or your breathing or anything better safe than sorry right so that's that's my thoughts behind it and and like I said it filters it nicely and everything stays clean as far as quieting the shot further uh, many people have tried all different type of things uh, to even further quiet the quiet energy system some with with uh, you know results uh some with none some some left to find that the uh, factory setup was even better and quieter than than their theories and what they had in mind so what i will say is that i don't have a decibel meter i don't know to what degree this extra diffusion of air uh is quieting the shot how much or if even but what i do know is that when i first did this to the flash pup several months ago and I got out into the uh, field, you know, and I went on a hunt and I got out into an open area. Immediately, my, my very first shot, I noticed the difference. And, and was it necessarily quieter? I don't know. But what I do know is that the, the pitch and the tone of the shot uh, completely changed. And so, you know, better, right? <laughs> you know, but how much better, I don't know. 
Did it lower the actual decibels? I don't know. More than anything, um, I'm putting this in there just to further diffuse the air and, and filter that lead dust. So I'm not claiming that this is uh, an even quieter energy modification or anything like that. It's just an air diffuser slash filter is all it is. So you can find, this is felt. It's high density, two millimeter thickness felt. And all I did was take uh, a nine by 12 sheet of it. So this is nine inches in length and two inches in width. Like I said, all I did was take uh, a nine by 12 sheet of it and cut off a strip, a two inch strip off the end of it. So now I've got a nine by two rectangular shaped piece of felt. Now you can find it at crafting stores. You can source it online. Uh, what you want to do though is make sure that it's a very high density two millimeter felt. If you even go to like a crafting store or something and start shopping around, you will find that even if they have uh, different colors and stuff and even different brands and they and they claim two millimeter thicknesses, there's different densities and, and you want to get a high density two millimeter felt. So I'm going to set this down just for a second and then I'm going to put everything back into the shroud. So, like I said, I put a, a, a U.S. Standard 114 O-ring around the, the groove of the barrel band. And I'm going to get all this back in. And all I do is slip it in up to the threads till it can't go no more. And when you've got that, that uh, sheen of silicone grease around there, it's not hard to get it past. I mean, you can wiggle it, and now I can push it in even just with my finger as far as it'll go. But what I'm gonna do is take the dowel and use that just to push it the rest of the way and seat it until it stops. And now, before I put the baffles back in, what I'm gonna do, well, actually, we gotta get our felt in there. So what I do is I just take this two inch piece of felt. Why I use two inches uh, wide is because that when it wraps the barrel, it, it's a very good fit to bring the seam together nice and tight. It fits nice and tight and it's seamed together nice. And that way you don't have such a, such a gap or, or, you know, it's just a real tight seam as it comes together on the top. So all you're gonna do is slip it under here. And when I made the piece for the video, I had actually used like a cream colored piece um, as I showed, but I'm gonna put back in my black piece because I like it to be black so that when you're looking at the gun from that angle, uh, everything looks the same. You know, you've got black showing in the inside of the hole you know, rather than, you know, white or some other color that kind of stands out and looks funky. But anyways, all you're going to do is bring it around like that and bring it together at the top and just get it feeding into your barrel band. And once you get it feeded in a little bit, rock it back and forth, you can get it all the way through. And what I do is just kind of bring it up at the top and slide it in. And I just kind of, I don't know, I'd say about three inches off the breech block is, is, is where I stop uh, with the felt. And now I'm going to take my shroud. I, like I said, I already put the, the barrel nut back in um, with the O-ring on it. Now I'm going to take the shroud and slip it over the barrel. Like I said, I like to keep it with an upwards pressure and ride the bottom of the barrel uh, rather than riding on the air reservoir. And all you're going to do is take the felt and pinch it together at the top like that, bring it together real close to the end, and take the shroud and wiggle it back and forth and just feed it in there. Once you get it started, it's, it's going to hold. Now all you've got to do is rock this back and forth and just kind of gently pull it together, you know, up towards the top of the barrel. And... The shroud, actually, as you rock it back and forth and feed it, it's just going to bring that seam all the way up and together. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to pull up and, and try to get it together with your fingers. You can just kind of give it a little help. And, and by rocking the shroud back in place like this as you're feeding it, um, like I said, it'll just, it'll just bring that seam up real nice. And if you're using that high-density 2-millimeter thickness, uh, it's, it's an excellent compressed fit in the shroud. It's not too tight. Um, and it's not too loose. It fits, it fits wonderfully in this, in this system here. So now I'm going to bring it all the way up until 
it gets over the collar of the barrel band and I'm just going to press it all the way up. So now the end of the barrel pressed the nut forward a little bit, but the first time that you're putting it back on, um, and especially when I had that stock, uh, when I had that stock O-ring in there, I, I had to use the socket to take it on and off every single time because you, you would get to a point when trying to loosen it or tighten it where the compression against the taper just wasn't enough to get you there and that the shroud would just spin around the barrel nut, you know, it would just spin in there. So after I installed that, that 114 O-ring in there and the first time like I'm doing now, getting it fixed back on, uh, I've, I never ever have to use the socket again um, as long as I don't push that nut back out of there. But I can unscrew the shroud, take it off and on as many times as I want and I don't ever need this. And that's great because if for some reason, which I'll get into later, if you're out in the field and you need to remove your shroud, um, you know, who's going to carry around a, a 14 millimeter socket uh, just for, you know, in the event. Um, so like I said, with that 114 in there, it's a really snug fit. It, it takes up every bit of that, that uh, seat around the barrel nut and it doesn't spin in there. It's enough, it's enough pressure to hold it in place. Um, so that when you're tightening your shroud and loosening your shroud, just the compression of the nut against the taper is enough to, to get it going. And, e and even when you're snugging it down, it'll come up every time perfectly, you know, QE on the side. So it's my first time putting it back in after I uh, reinstalled that, that nut. Let me get my direction correct here. So now what I'm going to do is just start to tighten it. And everything's going to be square. You know, that O-ring and everything is so tight in there. It, it's, it's holding it square. It, it really can't cock enough not to line up on the threads correctly or anything like that. So now I'm just going to keep going until I feel it snug up. There it goes. So now it's snug. And so now what I'm going to do, because I can't see it from here, what I like to do is get, get the QE, if you were facing uh, the barrel, you know, point it at your face, which I wouldn't recommend doing for any reason really, but um, if you were looking facing the, the end of the barrel, what I do is get this thing close to snug, and then I put that QE symbol down at about probably seven o'clock on the clock. Like I said, if you were, if you were facing the gun this way, I've got the QE lined up at about seven o'clock. So once I've got it there, let me get this. Once I've got the QE at seven o'clock and, and, and I know that my nuts almost all the way tight, you know, almost snug. What I do is hold the shroud in place and tighten the nut down just until it's slightly snug, not real, real tight or anything, just, just barely, you know, just snug. And what that's going to do now is allow me to give it that extra turn and get it all the way snug down and tight. And I don't need my wrench anymore. I'm going to bring that QE symbol right up into place. And I can do it just by looking at that milled flat on the bottom too. There. So now it's tight, you know, you don't want to reef it. Once it's it's hand tight, you know, that's that's good. Don't don't think uh you know that if you tighten it down really tight or something, you're going to uh you know enhance your barrel harmonics or you know hold the setup tighter or anything. That's all it takes is snugging down. And now for me, it doesn't matter if I'm in the field or what I'm doing. Um, I can take this off and on and it just lines up tight right into its spot, just how it should be every time. And also, once your once your uh, your baffles are in there and your end caps on, that's also pushing everything up against the nut, helping to to hold it in place. You know, so that's another thing. When I take it off and on all these times, and, and like I said, that nut doesn't turn. That's with everything in here. You know, that that just in combination of all this and the pressure holding it against the taper, and then the O ring on there, uh, you know, adding pressure so the nut can't spin. Um, it just comes in and out a million times and I never have to use the wrench again. Like I said, unless you push that nut on out of there and put it back in, then you've got to 
you've kind of got to reset your setup, you know, but once you get it and everything's in, you can take it off and on a million times without a, a socket. So now I slipped the first plastic one in. Now I'm going to slip the second plastic one in. And like I said, small hole. And when you put them in, just make sure that the felt's not hanging over uh, the edge of the plastic or anything. You know, you don't, you don't, you want it to fit in there square. You don't want to have anything binding. It should slip in freely. So now I've got all my baffles in and I'm going to screw my end cap back on. And the end cap, you know, just finger tight doesn't take much that o-ring seals it up in there helps hold it in place and also like i said prevent the air from being able to sneak out through the threads and out that gap so now everything's back in there i got my felt in there and everything's together and that is the end of the this part of the video that's the modification the the, the air diffuser uh lead dust filter modification um i showed you how to remove the shroud we talked about the internals a little bit and how it works. And now I'm gonna to get to the fun part. Here's the warnings, okay? Two things that I can think of that you never want to do in order to keep your quiet energy baffles intact and in good health. One, if you are, say you get excited, uh, you just sat down with, with the rifle your first time, uh, you're out in the field hunting and you don't cock the bolt enough, whatever you do that causes you to double feed a pellet into the breech, you absolutely do not want to try to fire two pellets out of the barrel through your shroud system, okay? Because you, you're, you, the, your pellets aren't going to have good flight. And, and whether the, the, the front one is probably the one that's going to be affected the most. And maybe the rear one not at all, but definitely the front one. And what's happening is you've got one pellet and another pellet. And the rear pellet is being pushed by the air. And the front pellet is being pushed by that pellet behind it. So what do you think is going to happen when it comes out the tip of the barrel and one pellet's pushing another? It's not going to take much influence in any direction to throw that front pellet you know, off course and off its, off its axis and you're going to clip your baffles. So simple solution for that, like I said, once you've got that bigger O-ring in there and you, and you set everything just like we did now, you can take this shroud off and on a million times. You know, I can take it and loosen it like I am now. And that's what you want to do. If you double feed a pellet, I'm not going to take it all the way off because like we just installed the felt and everything. But if you double feed a pellet, don't try to shoot it out through the shroud. If you can unscrew the shroud and slide it off like, I, like I'm talking about, great. If you can't or you don't have that 14 millimeter wrench handy, all you're going to do then is take the end cap off and remove all the baffles and then take your shot. Because you don't want to take a chance of clipping them and screwing them up. Get this back on. And like I said, you want to set it up so that when you're doing this, it's, it's not too tight. You just want to snug it down, you know. You even can feel it, you know, the pressure here, and you start to feel that, eh, 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 you know. You just give it a give it a good snug. You don't want to reef it down. Um, that nut's aluminum, and the, and the barrel's steel and the threads, and you don't want to take the chance of, of drawing it in too far and stretching this aluminum as that nut's trying to pull into the taper and... You don't want to strip, you know, pull the threads either, because like I said, it's soft aluminum and, and the and the barrel threads are steel. So just take caution and, and don't reef it down or, or tighten it, whether you're doing it with a wrench, by hand, whatever you're doing, just, just snug it down. It doesn't need to be tight. And now my second warning. Oh, man, I got to stop the video for a second. I just realized I didn't dig out uh, the other baffle, and I want to show you what happened uh, in this situation and how I ended up clipping one of my baffles um, 
And so anyways, let me pause the video for a second and then uh, I'll jump right back down. I got to grab it out of the box over here. All right. So now my second warning to you uh, about keeping your quiet energy baffles in good health is this and I'll explain the situation and what happened. All right. So I was out on a hunt and I got excited just like anybody does, you know. I had been hunting all day, didn't see a squirrel in sight, uh, stalking through the woods, standing, it didn't matter what I was doing, you know, it's just one of them crappy days where the squirrels, uh, you know, they weren't out. And um, so I was walking out and I was going to go home and I seen a squirrel uh, through a little stand of shrubby trees and stuff, you know, that I was knew I was going to have to move through. I saw this squirrel up in the tree and um, I was almost back to my car and out of the woods. And I thought, man, I got to get him, you know, I didn't see nothing all day and uh, I want the hunt to be fruitful and I sure would like to get him. So, you know, I started, uh, you know, excitedly moving through this, this brush as quiet as I could. And even though I know better based on, on logic uh, and, and now based on, on uh, experience, you know, and, and I already thought of this many times, um, even with other guns. This is something that you, you, you don't want to do. So, like I said, I was making my way through that brush and guess what happened? Sticks are breaking. I'm making a little bit of noise. I don't realize it that a branch catches on my bolt handle and does that. It could have been at the same time a, a branch broke and my boots were crunching through something or, or who knows. But I didn't hear it, you know, I didn't notice it. You know, that's pretty audible and, and it's metal, metallic sounding. You would think you'd hear it, but somehow I didn't. I don't know. So anyways, it's the first time anything like that ever happened to me. Uh, you know, so maybe I just kind of got careless too and, and wasn't thinking about it. So the bolt pops up. I get close to the squirrel, not realizing the bolt had popped up and... What happens when I take my shot? When the bolt is popped up like this and it, that return spring in there pushes the bolt back a little bit and jumps it back. As the bolt retracts just enough out of the breech hole and out of the barrel hole uh, to create a big gap. So now what happens is your pellet is in your breech and you're, you take your shot, your blast of air comes up Rather than it using its energy and its power uh, to push the pellet forward, which it does, it does push the pellet forward, but the majority of the energy and the power is released backwards uh, as there's no almost no resistance there. The breech seal isn't making contact. There's no way for it to seal up on the pellet probe, and the air rushes out the back and around the pellet probe and right up and out of here. So now what happens when... The majority of our high pressure air was exhausted out the back here and and uh, it was able to move so freely out of the breech and the pellet met resistance as it was dragging through the rifling and everything and how slow it came out or not I don't know. I would think that the pellets uh, only affected by the initial burst of air and then it's immediately slowing down as it travels but needless to say I knew within a second of taking my shot, what had happened. I knew from the sound of it that just by the sound, I knew that the air had escaped out and passed uh, here, even though I didn't feel it, I still knew just by the sound of it. And what I also heard was some kind of a little plastic tick. Now the pellet still came out of the end of the barrel, but what happened is that pellet didn't have enough momentum. It didn't have enough energy behind it, driving it forward for it to come out of the barrel right. You know, whatever it was, you know, it was too slow and it caused it to be wobbling off of its axis slightly. It didn't leave the barrel spinning on its axis perfectly and, and travel through this small hole. Like I said, the, the width of a credit card is, is how much clearance the skirt of that pellet has as it travels through this small hole in, in these uh, felt covered baffles. So you can imagine that it's it's not going to take much, and it clipped the last baffle. So whether or not it wasn't enough energy and gravity, uh, there you know there wasn't enough velocity 
and gravity started taking the pellet down and then it just clipped this last one because it didn't clip it didn't clip the end cap uh, and it made its way out um, but it, it broke uh, the baffle just that that little tick of the, of the skirt of the pellet on that last baffle as it traveled through the hole the last hole um, it broke it now <laughs> I probably didn't even have to go grab it because I don't know if you're going to see this anyways and I'm probably going to have to show you a close-up, but I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what happened. You can see that that small hole in the center of the baffle, this is the end with the, with the large hole, that small hole on the end of that baffle, it got clipped and the baffle's broke now. So luckily I had a different gun with the same exact size baffle and I was able to switch it out, you know, and, and it... it it kind of sucks and I do intend on uh, trying to order a new one you know and replacing it but uh, for now it's fine I can just I can just swap back and forth uh, if I want to but keep in mind that this could happen to you and if you are in a position where you don't have another good baffle around uh, you might find that your gun is not not holding the same accuracy you know I don't know to what degree uh, this is going to influence the pellet as it's moving through and, and air is not traveling evenly or, or whatever, you know, and air is allowed to, you know, more than anything, you know, you just don't want to screw up your baffles, you know, nobody wants anything in their gun broke. So two ways that I know for sure uh, that you can, you can clip these baffles and you can screw them up. One, double shooting a pellet um, through the baffles and two, not enough momentum and speed and and poor flight on a pellet when you when you have this uh, bolt pop up on you and all your air escapes backwards around the probe um, out the breech. So those are my two warnings for you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful for anyone that uh, didn't know any of this stuff. You know, I also hope that the, the, the filter mod uh, can be put to good use, you know, by many people. Like I said, I don't know what uh, to what degree it, it quiets the shot, but it definitely changes the tone of the shot um, to a noticeable degree, uh, a very noticeable degree. Um, and, and it's in a good way, you know. So everything seems, uh, you know, if you don't have this O-ring in here, good gosh, that shroud ping is, uh, it, it for me, it's almost unbearable, you know. Um, but with, 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 with that... 114 uh o-ring that i got in there and then this felt uh filter diffuser mod um when i'm out in the open it, it's a very noticeable difference you know the shot is it, there's no ping and like i said if you don't have a, a regulator installed you're still going to get a little bit of a cylinder ping and stuff on, on your air cylinder but um you know with the regulator installed and and that 114 and the felt filter mod in there I get out in the open and uh, shooting the JSB King 25s at 8.30, 8.25, right around there. Um, it's just, it's quiet. It's a little bit, I don't know if it's just a tone change or actual, like I said, decibel drop. I don't know. But it's a, it, there's zero ping to the shot. It's a very solid, and, it, and it's quick, and it's, it's an immediate sound, and it's over, you know. Um, without the regulator, and like I said, without that, 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 uh, barrel nut having its o-ring on it you, you're gonna find that you get a ching, you know you're gonna notice you, ching, you just do i'm crappy at making sounds and replicating them you know but i think you get what i'm saying anyway so all right i hope that was helpful i hope my my warnings uh from my experience learning the hard way you know although i've never uh double shot a pellet and broke baffles uh, it, just my logic tells me that that isn't a good idea. So I hope that those warnings uh, can help you out so you don't screw yours up. And I hope the video was, was uh, good to you if you wanted to know anything about the QE Shroud. And um, I was working on a regulator install video and I, I just realized as I was kind of moving through it that I need to address some other things first uh, before, I, before I do that. Um, because of course the Shroud has to come off and uh and then i thought you know next i'm pro i'm gonna do like a barrel video breach seal change um you know barrel removal initial clean all that kind of stuff barrel related uh, i'm gonna do that next so stay tuned for that and more to come after 
But uh, to all my brothers out there, happy shooting. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you, man. You know, I, I'm doing this um, literally out of the kindness of my heart and, and, and for my love for the game, you know. So for you guys that leave the encouraging comments and the thank yous and stuff, man, that, that just means the world to me, you know. So thanks for that. And to all my brothers out there, happy shooting. And we'll see you next time real soon. Take it easy.